We live in a unique place on an interconnected planet. Although there are natural extinctions that go on all the time, there are some losses we just can't afford. What is the most important thing people should know about herring? Um, it's a great question. I think that they really are important ecologically because so many things feed on them. And so I think that's essential that we try to keep their numbers up. You know, individual runs can have a half a million fish. The Herring River in Harwich hit a million fish twice in the last decade. When you have a million fish and each fish is capable, the females can carry a couple hundred thousand eggs, enormous potential to generate millions of juveniles. So really important ecologically, but also I'd, I'd want people to understand that it's such an important part of Cape Cod's cultural history. People used to go hunting, shell fishing, fishing from the shoreline, catching river herring, and that, that, that feature is somewhat fading, at least in some people's memories, and some people just don't have that experience, so they don't appreciate that going out to get these fish was an important part of their Cape Cod experience. They're part of a class of fish, the Diatomus fish class, where there's about 15 species in Massachusetts. There are only about 1% of the fish on the planet are diadromous, so they're not all that common. River herring are probably the most common and abundant diadromous fish in Massachusetts. So what are diadromous fish? They, they switch habitats to fulfill their life history. They're either born in saltwater and move to freshwater, or they're born in uh, freshwater and move to saltwater. So they're very unique in that way that they switch the habitats and change where they live. Encompasses two species, both alewife and blueback herring. Same genus, very closely related, but different species. So the public tends to call them as a group river herring. It's a great question to ask why river herring um, not doing as well now with all this interest and all this concern about restoration as they were, you know, 40, 50, 60 years ago. And we don't know that exactly, but I think that one of the real concerns are that we've really altered our landscapes. And so particularly in Cape Cod, huge population growth of humans, land use has increased, um, water use has increased. We're impacting our groundwater, our surface water with, with nitrogen and phosphorus pollution. So we're becoming more eutrophied, more impacted by nutrients. And so we think those habitats may be less productive for the eggs and the larvae and the juveniles to do well. Herring populations in Massachusetts faced a severe decline due to a combination of factors, including physical barriers like dams, overfishing, habitat degradation, and climate change. These issues significantly reduced their access to spawning grounds, altered their fishwater habitats, and impacted water quality. We're warming up. You know, the globe is warming up, and so warmer waters are typically less productive than cooler waters, and so maybe we're not realizing that level of productivity. But honestly, we, we're talking about these things. We don't know exactly why these diatomous fish populations are doing so poorly than, you know, say a generation ago. Their present status is considered depleted. The Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission conducts a stock assessment for river herring. It's an East Coast stock assessment. It was completed in 2024. And the status is they're depleted relative to historic levels. They're not considered overfishing because the data that supports the stock assessment is not robust enough to conclude they're overfished, but they're clearly depleted from historic levels. If we lost river herring populations, it would be catastrophic due to their significant ecological and economic roles. River herring are a vital food source for many other species including sport fish, birds, and marine mammals. They also contribute to the health of fresh water and marine ecosystems. Their disappearance would have a cascading effect, impacting the entire food web and potentially jeopardizing other species reliant on them. So what do you do when you have a status like this? Well, in 2006, the Division of Marine Fisheries closed the fishery, the shore fishery for river herring. 
And before that, there, all these river herrings uh, runs were open to harvest. There were certain amounts of fish you could take. Massachusetts stopped that in 2006. And so ever since then, we haven't had a harvest. We've also tried to restore habitats. A lot of effort has gone on. People really focused on fish passage as the bugaboo, as the reason why these fish had declined. Yet the fact is in the 50s, you know, 50, 60 years ago, we had much higher populations of river herring with much worse fish passage. I grew up on the Cape. It's a big part of my personal history. Um, we used to go to the Harwich River, Herring River, Herring Run, every Sunday during the peak season with my dad, catch these fish, um, bring them home and cook them and eat them. And it's something that's really a, very much a part of my personal family history. And I was around these Herring Runs forever. And so there's a lot of that in it. And I think it's a, it's a common story in the Cape. Folks that grew up here, Near a herring run, they would go, they'd get a few fish to eat or use as bait. So it's very much part of, I think, our, our family or personal cultural history. So what is a herring run? What it means is when they come up in the spring and they run on a spawning migration. So they're moving upstream or they're running upstream from the ocean to find spawning grounds. And so the local term that came to be is that it's a herring run which otherwise means a spawning migration. Once upon a time, there were none of that. It was very natural. But what's happened is people have built uh, ponds for different purposes, for um, water supply, for recreation. They built mills for hydropower. As they built these structures, you needed some type of a, a structure to convey these fish into the spawning areas to make up that elevational difference. And so that's why you need fishways. If you can take a dam out, it's the best thing you can possibly do. But in some cases, you might lose that pond. And, or that pond is really appreciated as a water supply or recreational area. So in some cases, you can't do the optimal approach, which is to take the dam out, so you build a fishway. Yeah, in, in terms of interacting with volunteers, um, we develop what's called a stream maintenance policy with the Department of Environmental Protection. And this policy allows people to do stream maintenance under the Wetlands Protection Act with DMF guidance. So we write the plans, we train the citizens, and they go out and they do what people have done for hundreds of years, which in this winter, there's tree falls, they remove the tree falls if they're blocking fish. When uh, wetland plants overgrow a channel, they remove those. And so this policy makes it easy and our job is to train volunteers to get them to help because there's so many river herring runs. We have, historically, there were 50 runs in the Cape. Maybe we have 40 active now. That's a lot of territory to keep an eye on. Our staff can't handle that. So our goal is to train locals to do that work. River herring is a big target for citizen scientists and river herring counting that go on right now in the springtime. There was about 12 volunteer visual counts last year on Cape Cod. There were four electronic counting stations and three video. The volunteer visual tends to be the realm of the, of the citizen scientist. On the Cape, the Association for the Preservation of Cape Cod is very active in coordinating all these volunteers. And they do a very good job of making sure it happens. DMF published a protocol years ago on how to do this, to do it in a quantitative way so you can get a, an accurate estimate. So we receive all the count data and we, we, we churn out the numbers of the estimates for the groups. But it's the Association for the Preservation of Cape Cod that does the work to really keep them going. And it's a great credit to them and to all the volunteers that get out every spring to do this work. So what are the rules for herring right now? So the state of Massachusetts, we banned the harvest in 2006. But a new system has come up through Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission where you can open a harvest if you have a sustainable fishery management plan. So we've worked with three towns to develop those plans. Two have been approved and one's being approved right now. That allows towns to have a harvest again. So far the towns haven't chose to have a harvest, but they have permission. And basically what it says is, here's your run count, based on your run counts, here's your average run count. You can take this percentage of that run count and it'll be sustainable. You won't impact future recruitment. So we very much as an agency support finding a way to get back to having some modest harvest to let citizens have a crack at getting few of these fish. 
Well, they, they're important for a lot of reasons. I, I mentioned earlier how people like to catch them to eat them or to use them for bait. That goes way back. That goes back at a time when people in the Cape would forage for food, look for some supplement to their food sources, or they would use those for bait. They might sell them for bait, for ground fishing or for something else. So they had that real commercial sustenance and recreational application. But they're also really important as forage for everything you can imagine. All kinds of species of fish, wildlife, mammals, they have migrations to intercept the migrations of river herring. So they move to try to find these fish because they're such an important food source coming from the ocean in the springtime when there's not a lot, of, a lot of other types of food around. They also bring nutrients from the ocean. So they're very important in transferring nutrients from the ocean to freshwater habitats. And so I think that's a, a real ecological importance they have. And I also should just mention what they mean to humans just for inspiration in terms of, a, a, I think they're a symbol of spring, of renewal. When they come up the rivers, you can see them easily. And so people really connect them, I think, as a sign that spring is coming. On the Cape, the Herring River in Harwich is probably the largest run, and that's had over a million fish in 2014 and 2019. So that run is trending upward, and so there's hope that we could possibly have a harvest there in the next couple of years. And, and to me, you know, growing up here, it was always, a, you know, a big part of that approach is you, you had access to hunting. You had access for shell fishing, for shoreline fishing for striped bass and things, and then catching river herring. That has been greatly diminished in recent decades by the development of Cape Cod and, and less public access and less um, availability of natural resources. So I, I think river herring falls into that category of natural resources where we'd love to see a way to restore the populations and return some of that access to the average people that live here. <laughs>